Hi there, this is David and welcome to part 3 of my series overview of the Legend of Heroes franchise. In part 1, I discussed the series' origins as well as the Gagharp trilogy, and in part 2, I went over the Trails in the Sky series. Here, I'll be giving an overview of the Crossbell duology established in Trails of Zero and Azure, released for the PSP in Japan only, but later translated to English. In order to really see the games in depth, please look at Let's Plays that I did of each of those games. The links will be in the video description as I'll be touching on some plot points, but not enough to really constitute spoilers, just enough to give you a general feel of what's going on in the games. The two games take place several months after the events of Trails in the Sky the Third, and somewhat concurrently with Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2. Originally, Falcon was not going to have a crossbow arc at all, and go straight from Trails in the Sky to Trails of Cold Steel. However, they thought that they needed a new series to bridge the gap between the two, and the Crossbell duology was born. Because the first two installments of Cold Steel were already written at this time, Falcon was able to foreshadow events that would happen in Cold Steel seamlessly with the events that occurred in Crossbell. Joshua, Estelle, Renee, Kevin, and Reese, among others in the Sky cast, come to Crossbell to join in the fun, which really does make this seem like a living, breathing world, and it's part of the reason why the series has such a rabid fanbase. These games both take place in the small country of Crossbell, established as a border state between the much larger and more powerful rival nations of Calvard and Erebonia. The games center on what is only foretold as the Crossbell problem. But that's like the understatement of the year though, because the entire existence of Crossbell is one big problem. Both Erebonia and Calvard are vying for control over the tiny state by bribing and otherwise influencing events in the Crossbellian Congress, as well as sending their spies and mafias into the city to aid in disruption and cause civil unrest. The tiny, ineffectual government is unable to really do anything about the situation since they're so neutered by their much more influential neighbors. Thus, lawlessness reigns with rival gangs warring in the streets, dueling mafias, and underground black markets complete with drug smuggling. And all that's before Ouroboros has any sort of influence at all. Just as Trails in the Sky followed the adventures of a group of bracers, Zero and Azure focus on the activities of the newly established Special Support Section, hereafter to be called the SSS, a branch of the Crossbow Police Department. It's set up to work similarly to the Bracer Guild, as a way to ingratiate themselves to the citizenry, as most Crossbellians have lost trust in law enforcement. You see, it's very difficult to enforce any sort of laws whatsoever because of the aforementioned problems, and to compound the fact, Foreigners from Calvard and Erebonia are completely immune to any sort of prosecution brought forth by the government. The SSS is led by Lloyd Bannings, a detective who's learning to find himself after his last family member, his brother, was murdered. Joining him is Ellie, the mayor's daughter, who's leaving politics behind to try to find another way to change Crossville from the inside. Randy, a fun-loving former soldier with a mysterious past and troubling family life, and Tio, a young girl with mysterious power who was rescued by Lloyd's late brother from the same sort of lodges that Renee was kept in. That's your party for Trails of Zero. But in Azure, more join the mix beginning with Wazzy, the leader of the Testaments, a street gang who's constantly fighting with his rival Wald, Noel, a member of the Guardian Force, which is Crossbow's version of the army, and Rixia, a Calvardian dancer for the Ark NCL with a few secrets of her own. And finally, Dudley, a high-ranking police officer who spends the first game looking down on the SSS, but eventually warms up to them by the time Azure rolls around, rounds out the cast. The Crossbell duology uses a much different progression system than Trails in the Sky. While in Liberal, Joshua and Estelle would walk to a new region, meet the Bracer Guild, solve the people's problems there, and then move on to the next area, never being able to go back to previous locations. But that's not the case here. Zero and Azure both take place wholly in Crossbell and their outlying areas. During most chapters, you're able to explore all the city, as well as the mining town of Mainz, the farming village of Amerika, and the army outposts. Because you're never really leaving and meeting new NPCs like in the Sky games and the first Cold Steel game, you really do get to know the residents of Crossbell and become very involved in their unique problems, rather than just kind of spending two days in a particular region. It works very well for a story-driven game like this, and importantly, it never gets boring. You might think that hanging around in Tiny Crossbell for two entire games would lead to a lot of repetition, but it doesn't. Falcon was very intentional in their use of dungeons. Very rarely do you ever have to visit the same place twice. Also, whereas in the prior games you had to walk everywhere, except for when you'd hop on board an airship to get to the next region, 
Here you're able to cover Crossbell much quicker by using the bus system. Basically, there are bus stops sprinkled all throughout the country that you can take for free, greatly reducing the need for backtracking. And while in the city proper, all you need to do is access the map screen, and you can fast travel to any of the districts inside of Crossbell. Later, in Azure, you get your very own police car that you can use in lieu of the bus system, though if you're feeling nostalgic, the buses do still run. Also introduced here is the Master Court system, which will be very familiar to anyone who's ever played Cold Steel already. Essentially, the Master Courts work similarly to the regular courts by influencing your stats and teaching you spells, but they can also be leveled up, granting you additional bonuses, more stat gains, as well as more spells. Now I'm going to talk about the story just a little bit, not really enough to constitute spoilers, but just enough to give you a taste about what's going on. Mainly, I want to talk about Kia, a very important non-playable character that Lloyd and the gang find stuffed in a suitcase about to be sold off to the highest bidder during the Swartz auction. She's lost all her memories, and by all accounts, she seems like your average, everyday normal girl. But it's here where the story truly takes off. Before this, your priority was just police work, quelling the gangs and the mafias, but after this pivotal event, the SSS all become somewhat like Kia's surrogate parents. However, by the end of Zero, it becomes apparent that she's anything but normal, and that the entire fate of Crossbell will rest on her small shoulders. Play the games yourself to see what the story's all about. You will not be disappointed. It's the reason why the duology is considered the best in the series. It's non-stop action from the get-go. The characters are relatable and lovable. I hope that this overview gives you a feel for what you're going to be experiencing in these epics. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and have a good day.